Charlie Carroll is somebody that has made a lot of money in poker by playing an exploitative style and not being afraid to make any play he thinks correct. Let's see how this translates into the few spinning goes he's played on YouTube on the really high stakes of 500 games. He's playing for $1,000 here and he's got two spinning go regs, monkey boss and end boss of spinning goes pretty much. Let's see firstly what sizing he decides to use here in the small blind. Anything from limping, min raising to 2.5, even up to 3x is fine. So I think this 2.2x completely fine with his king 5 suited. Against a good reg like monkey boss we really shouldn't expect too many folds on the flop there though. Expect him to defend very very wide. And already we get an interesting insight into Charlie's thought process here. He goes, if I bet I don't think I'm folding a 3, definitely agree. And then he doesn't expect Monkey Boss to have too many ASEX. I disagree with this, Monkey Boss will definitely be flatting a decent chunk of ASEX preflop. He's not going to jam them all. But he decides to take the line check call. And I think this is actually a good line to take. You could bet it sometimes, but check call most often here I think makes a lot of sense. Expecting Monkey Boss to be able to call the flop super wide with hands like even Junky Queen high, Jack high, 10 high, as well as the draws he lists off here like the 7x gut shots. So I think Charlie might underestimate how wide Monkey Boss calls a flop, but I still think he finds a good play on the turn. Unfortunately for Charlie, he doesn't hit his flush draw. Let's see if Monkey Boss continues with the aggression. Expect him to go all in with any full house for value. He does put Charlie to the test with a jam. Let's see if he considers. Nope, just straight folds. I think this is reasonable. He has a really, really bad hand when considering hero call there. The 5x really going to interfere with a lot of very natural bluffs for Monkey Boss. Monkey Boss being a good player could still find some more unnatural bluffs, but still having that 5 is just a really bad card in general. The next interesting spot comes from Charlie calling a 3x blind versus blind from a different spin he's playing. Good call, definitely want to be defending every suited hand here. Definitely got to continue, let's see if he ever considers to raise here, could be a consideration. Nope, just a quick call, completely fine to call this hand. An interesting turn, a turn definitely good for his range. Monkey boss checks it over and Charlie's thinking a little bit. Is he going to start turning it into a bluff? No, he just checks, takes a card. This is definitely okay. He's going to have so many different combinations of hands to choose to start turning into a bluff. Anything with like even the jack of clubs, ten of clubs, nine of clubs, for example, from the turn. Even some backdoor hearts that totally brick could start to bluff. So it doesn't need to start bluffing a 3x yet. Just seeing what the river brings. He still can potentially have a little bit of showdown value. Maybe can turn a 3 into a bluff depending on what the river comes. The river comes a very interesting one, 4 to a flush, and Monkey Boss checks it over to Charlie. Charlie could end up on this river with many medium flushes. He's going to call all the hands with like King of Clubs, Jack of Clubs, Ten of Clubs, Nine of Clubs, lots of these hands on the flop. So it definitely can represent flushes. It'll be interesting to see if he decides to turn this through into bluff or check it back. So we can have a quick check of this. He does decide to turn it into a bluff. He chooses half pot. I think this is okay representing a lower flush, like maybe like a 9 or lower flush with this kind of sizing. Really putting pressure on if Monkey Boss has a hand like King Queen No Club, putting him in a really tough situation. I think the weaker the player you're playing against, the more this is going to work. Monkey Boss going into the tank a little bit. But unfortunately for Charlie, he finds the jam, so probably had one of those traps. The advantage of having a nicely constructed range by Monkey Boss here. Getting some bluffs from Charlie. It's a nice play by both here, I think. I don't think either player has done anything wrong here. Our next hand comes with Charlie. Heads up big blind, calling a min raise with the 8-7 offsuit. Getting a lovely flop for the hand. And already showing that he's capable to find some plays that some regs are not capable of. Finding a donk bet on the flop here with a small sizing, which I really, really like. Because we're forced to defend so wide pre-flop in a heads-up scenario versus a min-raise, Charlie just simply has every possible straight and the majority of all possible two pairs having all the suited ones and even some of the off-suit ones. So leveraging this with a donk 
actually becomes a really nice play and it's cool to see Charlie recognise this in game and apply it. The villain calls Charlie's small donk on the flop and the turn comes a 9. Charlie says he's reasonably happy with this turn and I agree. When you think of what Charlie could be donking, this 9's pretty good, completing some draws he may occasionally donk into top pair and also the 7's not got devalued that much, so a reasonable turn. Let's see what he decides to do. He decides to continue betting with a small sizing and I think this is a really sharp and good play again. Getting some protection from your 7, getting some value from any 4 slash 5 which Charlie thinks the villain could have a lot of and I agree. I think people have a tendency to over raise on the flop. Hands like pocket aces, pocket kings, pocket queens which should consider to just flat the flop to protect the calling range. If people over raise these hands, your sevens is way higher up than theory on the turn. So I think a good play by Charlie again here on the turn. The villain calls the donk bet once again and the river comes the queen of diamonds. At this point, Charlie says he still thinks he's ahead quite a decent proportion of the time on the river. Still expecting to face a lot of 4 and 5x. I agree with him. The fact that people have usually over raised value a lot on both previous streets means we're going to be way often more ahead than even theory here on the river so I agree with his assessment of the spot. Because of this he decides to lead out again on the river this time for around a third pot and again I'm okay with this play. I think you could even go a little bit smaller at this point but in general I like how this whole hand is played. I think it's quite a nicely executed hand from Charlie here. The action's over to noob guy and let's see what he decides to do versus this river bet. He gets called by Queen 6, an unlucky river for Charlie, and Charlie's really surprised that the villain doesn't raise. Villain calls quite quickly here, so he doesn't even think about raising. And this is a good example of how this donk bet can overachieve, because this is a clear value jam versus the donk bet on the river here for Queen 6. The fact the villain doesn't find it shows he's over respecting this donk plus barrel line from Charlie. So I think the hand was very nicely played by him and actually overachieved. This hand is a really dicey one. Charlie opened with a min raise king nine of hearts on the button, which is good standard play. Monkey boss actually free bet him none all in to six big blinds. Noob guy folded and Charlie decided to call. I think this is already where people who aren't familiar with spin and goes might be a bit surprised to find that you can actually fold king nine of hearts pre-flop. It's a break even call for theory and if a player is missing any bluffs it's going to be losing a lot of chips to call. So best case scenario we're about have a break even call. Worst case scenario it could be a really really dicey spot. The flop comes jack 10-7 and Charlie's happy he's got a double gut shot. However the small blind is doing incredibly well on this flop. It smashes his non-all-in range, which is mainly centered around really high pocket pairs and some Broadway hands as bluffs. So actually, although the hand looks very nice, on this board it's actually struggling quite a lot. Monkey Boss fires a small C bet of a little bit over two big blinds and Charlie decides to make the call, which I like. I think raising would be a pretty big mistake versus Monkey Boss's range here. The turn comes the four of hearts here and monkey boss decides to check over to Charlie. I think Charlie needs to proceed with caution here. I expect monkey boss to have traps and also just many combo draws and just high draws in general that he's planning to check call. Because of the range construction here, it's really hard for monkey boss to have too many check folds. However, Charlie does decide to go all in versus the check. And I can't blame him when you're not super familiar with spin and go dynamics. It can be tempting here to think Monkey Boss may have just been taking a stab at the flop and then giving up. And he may expect way more forward equity here than what he actually is going to get in reality. Unfortunately for Charlie, he does get snapped called by one of these combo draws. And this may appear on the surface as somewhat as a cooler. But I wouldn't class this as a cooler. I think he's just being too over aggressive into what's going to be in an extremely strong small blind on all in range here. So I think this is the first hand I would call quite a sizable misplay, but one I can really understand not coming from a spin and go background. So hard to be too critical of him here, in my opinion. Create your free account today at rnbpoker.com and take advantage of our ever growing video library, coaching, and leak finders. 
See you in the next video, guys.